Welcome everybody to another. Okay. We're live, man. Okay. Hey, let's go. It's exciting. We're here. We're here. Welcome everybody to another episode that of Madden. What? What That's do you mean? Thing? What's my thing? That's Just your thing. Starting a little early. Yeah. Hey, yeah. you know what? I mean, I, I wanted to get out the gate early. You know. Crazy. So guys, welcome to another episode of Madden Daily Drops, Madden 20 edition. Uh, we're here to talk about superstar X factors. Uh, really excited about that. Um, how you been, man? I've been good. I've been good. You know, the community is really excited. Last week we went over franchise and we have a full schedule of these streams coming up. So I know people are really looking forward next week to Ultimate Team and then we'll have gameplay part two. But tonight it's gameplay part one. Uh, this is Superstar X Factor. We have two developers coming out tonight, a fan favorite developer yeah. and Clint. Uh, so he will be out to break this down. And well, the goal of this is to really, you know, tell you about what uh, Superstar X Factor is, kind of break things down, ultimately get your questions and your feedback on that. And then as we move into EA Play, that's where we're going to show you more about Superstar X Factor. But tonight, we want to just do these to give you context around everything new in Madden. Uh, we'll have a blog go live tonight with a breakdown of Superstar X Factor, the things we talk about. And then tomorrow, there'll be another Gridiron Notes piece where we'll actually break down your questions and talk a little bit more about it. So uh, that's why we do these. If you're new to the stream, uh, we do go live every day, uh, but these are special nighttime streams where we actually break those things down. You know, we, we kind of relax, we kind of have fun, it's a good time. And, and that's <laughs> what you should be seeing here. Um, you know, we're in the hallway uh, here at Tiburon. Everyone's still working really late. They're just served dinner, so everyone's kind of moving around. Like, it's meant to be fun, it's meant to be light, and Agent K is gonna walk you all through that here as uh, your community manager. So we're really excited. I'm going to get out of here in a second, uh, but Agent K, what else you got to add? Yeah, so um, at, once the stream is, uh, we're going to, at the end of the stream, we're going to throw out a survey for you guys to let us know how we're doing, you know, how we're communicating to you guys. One of the things we hear from our core all the time is that they want information early and often, and they also want a little bit more context. You know, content is king, but context is queen, you know, so at the end of the day, that's what this show is about, is giving you guys some context. Um, regarding Madden 20 and answering those questions. I'm really excited. I mean, last, last week's stream was great. Um, you know, a lot of the feedback that we got from the community, the questions that they had, we were able to meet with the developers, answer them the next day in the morning yeah. um, and, and whatnot. So it's, it's been pretty awesome. Yeah, so let's go ahead and let's get the folks out here that know best, uh, the actual developers of our game. Uh, I'm gonna head out and we'll see you very shortly with uh, Clint Oldenburg. Great stuff. We are back. Uh, we got Clint Oldenburg, uh, one of our senior designers on the gameplay team. Really excited to have you here, Clint, tonight on Madden Daily Drops. And we're going to talk a little bit about Superstar X Factors. Yeah. So, uh, you I'm know, excited. Yeah. I mean, let, let's go ahead and just, you know, get to it real quick here. Superstar X Factors, what are they? Great question. Superstar X Factors is a group, actually, two groups of very special players. These are guys that take over NFL games, the star, dri star driven league of the NFL. These are guys like our cover boy, Patrick Mahomes, okay. Aaron Donald from the Rams, Alvin Kamara, Juju from the Steelers. These are the elite NFL superstars that can do things that the rest of us wish we could do. Okay. Awesome. And, and you know, help me understand, like, um, why, are we, why are we doing Superstar X Factor? Yes, yeah, so the main purpose is to make stars feel like stars. And with that comes diversifying gameplay strategy. Um, de-homogenizing the experience, making players have to rely on different strategies based on the players they have on their team and the players they're, they're playing against. And to really make these guys feel like themselves and bring that wow factor that they bring to the NFL field. And the ways that we're doing that is through what we call superstar abilities and zone abilities. So when I talked about the two groups of players, there's the X factors, that's gonna be a group of 50 players, the most elite players in the league, and they have special abilities that they use on the field, but in addition to those special abilities, they also have a zone ability. These players are gonna be able to earn that zone ability via in-game objectives. That's gonna give them a special power that could be con uh, countered by the defense via their own in-game objective. And then there's a subset, another group of players, 
total number to be determined, probably fluid uh, through most of the year. Uh, they're going to have superstar abilities, but they're not going to have the zone ability. Okay. And these superstar abilities are things that are always available to these players. They're going to be used situationally, and we're going to go into the, uh, some of those details here in a minute, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, you, you mentioned superstar X Factor players. They have these zone abilities. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, what those are? You know, I mean, I know, I know we saw one of them in one of the articles where they highlighted Bazooka. Right. Yeah. And I think we should, we should probably use that as a great example to kind of tee into this. Uh, Bazooka, what, what is that? Bazooka is Patrick Mahomes' zone ability. Okay. So once he meets his in-game objective, which is uh, yet to be determined in terms of tuning, but it's, um, for example, going to be complete a certain number of passes during the game that are for 30 or 40 yards or more, mm -hmm. then his uh, maximum pass distance is going to be increased to an extra 15 yards roughly, so about 80 yards. Okay. Our default max pass distance in game is and has been 70. He's going to get an extra 10 to 15 yards on top of that. And he's actually on record as saying the furthest that he's ever thrown the ball is 83 yards. So we're actually a little short from the 83 yards. Uh, but what's important are these things have to be earned. They can be countered. He can be taken out of the zone okay. via a sack, a fumble, an interception. Then he'll lose that ability. And you can earn and knock out. Um, multiple times over the course of a season. These are meant to be special moments that these players uh, bring up in the NFL. Um, so that's a great example of a zone ability. Okay. Uh, I've heard a few things thrown around the office. Uh, I've heard some other names thrown out there. So I'll, I'll, I'll name some real quick for you, and you can kind of talk a little bit about what they are, you know, what kind of gets the player in the zone and what you can do to get them out of the zone. I heard, like, rack them up um, is one of those uh, flying around here in the office. <laughs> Yeah, uh, rack em up is the zone ability for rack catch, essentially rack catch specialist. This player is going to excel at using the rack catch mechanic, and when he's making rack catches, if he's single covered while in the zone, he is going to be very successful at catching um, contested catches and hanging on first hits when using rack catch. And again, uh, that's something that that player is going to have to earn via in-game objectives, make a certain number of catches for a certain amount of yardage, and also be able to get knocked out by the defense either you know you could go for a user interception if you want to lurk or you can do a catch tackle knockout knock the ball out cause a drop or an incompletion that's another way to knock that guy out of the zone got it um another one that i heard was first first one free first one free yeah that's a running back zone ability so if you get a that amount of rushes or a good amount of yards um let's for example say you're going to need four rushes for 45 yards to get in the zone or something like that, then your next attempt at a juke spin or hezzy move is going to give you a very high chance of a fake out. Um, again, same thing. Uh, first one free can be knocked out. If you tackle that ball carrier for a loss of yards or cause a fumble via hit stick, he will lose uh, his zone ability and then have to re-earn that over the course of the game or the next game. Got it. And I, and I know one of the things you mentioned kind of earlier was that you guys are still doing tuning on a lot of these things based off of just information I'm assuming you're getting from play test mm -hmm. and just kind of people here playing in the studio and whatnot. Is that correct? Yeah, all of the zone criteria, uh, what we are currently referring to as triggers and knockouts, that's still very fluid and things that are being locked down as we finalize the game. Cool. Cool. Well, I, the last one I heard, and it's kind of funny, is fear monger. I mean, that was one of the, the in the zone abilities that I kind yeah. of heard going through the hallway, probably because Scant was walking by, you know, and I'm like, man, that guy definitely strikes the fear of God in you when he's walking down the hall. But yeah, so talking about fear monger. Fear monger is one of our pass rusher abilities. And uh, this also is going to come with a little bit of a gameplay teaser, which I know we're not uh, diving too deep into tonight, but um, we have redone how pressure uh, from the pass rush impacts our quarterback. We've overhauled that space. And with that comes this new ability called Fearmonger. When this player is in the zone, he's going to be able to apply pressure penalties to the quarterback from a further distance and also while engaged in a block, which is going to be the only way you're going to be able to apply pressure to the quarterback when engaged with a blocker. Okay. Um, so you talk, we talked about zone abilities. Let's talk about, you know, the superstar abilities, right? You know, um, one of them I heard around here was escape artists. And, and it's, it's something that just for the folks that, um, we're talking about these right now. Once we're done walking through some of these superstar abilities, we're going to go ahead and actually show you guys um, our cover athlete, um, what his zone abilities are, what are his superstar abilities, so that you guys can have some context in regards to what's going on here. But let's talk about superstar abilities. Um, I've heard escape artists out there. Uh, what is escape artist? 
Yeah, that's another popular one here in our internal testing. But uh, before we get into the details, I want to make clear the difference between superstar abilities and zone abilities. So, uh, like I said, zone abilities are something you have to earn with an in-game objective, and those objectives are going to be dynamic based on the game style you're playing on. So they're okay. going to be harder on competitive than they are arcade. Superstar abilities are always available and going to be used situationally. So now we can jump into fast break. Um, uh, excuse me, escape artist. We'll cover fast break in a second. So escape artist is the scramble ability used on mobile quarterbacks. And this is going to give those players elite speed and agility when scrambling on passing plays behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, these things are going to be there the entire game. You don't have to earn them. You can't knock them out of that. But there are going to be counters built in. Uh, another gameplay teaser. So we did a lot of work on QB contain. And that is the counter to this ability. So if you want to keep this really fast guy in the pocket, like Lamar Jackson, uh, you're going to want to use your QB contain. You're going to want to use your QB spies. And there's also going to be an increased risk of fumbling with these uh, Scrambling quarterbacks. Got it. Okay. Uh, fast break. I know you talked about that just recently. Um, you know, before we went ahead and talked about escape bars. What's going on with fast break? Yeah, fast break is uh, pretty cool as well. It's the running version of escape artists. So on designed quarterback run plays, and um, that's important because, like I said, these are situational. So you're going to need a playbook that supports the type of players you have on your team. Okay. On designed quarterback run run plays, the fast break ability is going to give the quarterback immediate ball carrier control, meaning the second that you receive the snap, you can go any direction you want. You're not going to be locked into the direction of the play. You can run left, right, outside, inside. Um, and because of that ability, there's, uh, that's going to give a delay in the read and react time of the defense. Um, so it's going, to make, uh, it's going to allow you a little bit more time to decide which lane you want to run through. And again, the same type of counters are there. You're going to have a higher risk of fumble. You're going to also st uh, drain your stamina while doing these things. Um, we're about to talk about another one coming up soon, so I'm not going <laughs> to ruin that one, but keep going. Yeah, so Slotomatic was one of the other ones I heard about Superstar Abilities. I, it recently changed. So, like, the, one of the things we talked about last stream was we, we had these names that were out there and we we're telling people don't get too attached to the names. Yeah. Um, so, this was one that recently went through a name change, yes. uh, which is Slotomatic. Talk to me a little bit about Slotomatic and kind of what is that uh, counter right there. Yeah, Slotomatic is our slot machine specialist ability, and it, it does a number of things, but the most important thing is that. Uh, this ability is only, only going to work on a receiver when he's aligned in the slot. So Julian Edelman, I think you'd mentioned him earlier, he is he has the slotomatic ability. If you have him aligned out wide, he's not going to get any of those advantages as he would when he's in the slot. Um, some of those advantages are uh, he's going to get elite cuts when running routes. Um, he's also going to be very reliable at catching cont uh, contested passes when running short routes from the slot. So we're talking about... Um, drags, hitches, curls, things like that. Uh, utilizing these players to their strengths are what are going to allow our players to get the most out of them and diversify each player to make them feel special. Got it. So I, I really like that. The whole idea here is to make the players feel special and authentic at the end of the day, that they're playing like these NFL superstars, which is really cool. Uh, the next thing is enforcer. Just in a quick question for you. Across all game modes? Great question. That's great a great question. question. Yep. Charles. Uh, so... so yeah, so I, I'm, I'm assuming someone in the chat brought that up. Um, when it comes down to game modes, how, does this, how do these abilities work across the board? That is a great question, and that is one of the great things about the way that we built this feature is these are going to be used in a unique way across all of our modes. So they're going to be used in Ultimate Team uh, via the player upgrades that you've grown accustomed to with a lot of new cool stuff that we are going to reveal at a different time. Uh, obviously, what we're talking about is for regs and base oh, rosters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then as you jump into franchise, you're going to take those in with you on that roster. But what I'm really excited about inside a franchise is uh, you're going to be able to use these things as a progression tool to build your team. Okay. And also through the draft, there's going to be players that you're going to have to scout and find that are going to have the ability to earn superstar abilities and zone abilities and become X factors. That's going to bring um, some differentiation into that mode as well through these abilities. Um, so there's going to be more details coming on all of that stuff in upcoming blogs and streams. Okay. Uh, so I don't want to give up too much, but a uh, great question from Farles over there yeah. and, the, and the chat Yeah, the well. chat. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate that. Farles, man of the people, is out there lurking the chat, making sure we answer some of these questions live, some of the feedback that we got last week from you guys. 
Um, so last but not least, uh, Superstar Bill, let's talk about Enforcer, and then we'll go ahead and give people an example of our cover athlete, like what's going on with his zone abilities yeah. and his superstar abilities. Enforcer is another cool ability. It's a defensive ability and uh, very simply will not allow broken hit sticks. So when you're using this player, regardless of the size or speed of the player that he's hit sticking, a uh, guy, Bobby Wagner has this, Harrison Smith from the Vikings, uh, currently, again, all fluid, not set in stone, but uh, when you hit stick with this player, he's not going to allow broken hit stick tackles. Got it. So at the end of the day, it's run for my life. Yeah. <laughs> Avoid this player. Yeah. Um, so Scan's standing in the background right now. He wants me to mention something, so I'll mention it for him. Another teaser for gameplay. We're doing gameplay here in a couple weeks, but um, we've also reworked how uh, hit sticks work. So there's more broken hit sticks globally. Uh, we're really focusing on the ratings matchup and the weight and the momentum of the players in hit sticks, uh, right. which is going to make abilities like this more valuable. So you're going to want the enforcer if you're a big hit stick player. Otherwise, you do risk having more broken hit sticks. Uh, when attempting that tackle. Great stuff, man. So, okay, well, you know what? I think a lot of people are wondering, okay, how does this kind of come into play when you're actually looking at an athlete? We're going to go ahead and pull up a graphic that we have right here of Patrick Mahomes, our Madden 20 cover athlete, and we're going to go ahead and walk through each of uh, his in the zone, uh, his uh, zone abilities, and then we're also going to go ahead and look at his superstar abilities. So we have him right here. Uh, first off, he has bazooka. So we talked about that earlier in the broadcast. Yep. Uh, you, let's go ahead and reiterate again exactly what does bazooka do and kind of what are the things that get him in the zone and out of the zone. Yep, like we said earlier, bazooka is going to allow him to throw uh, an 80 yard pass by increasing his max pass distance. So uh, you're going to be able to unlock that via an in game objective. And that objective uh, might look something like four or five completed passes for 30 or more yards on each completion. The defense can knock you out of the zone by getting a sack, a fumble, or an interception. One thing I want to note about Bazooka is uh, initially, um, just like many of us internally, there's probably some like, whoa, 80-yard pass, that sounds weird. Um, it's situational. Again, right, in order to get an 80-yard pass, you need to be inside your own 25. You need to get time to throw the pass. For You're sure. going to need a receiver that's going to be able to get that deep before you get sacked. The teaser, uh, you know, pass rush um, <laughs> may not facilitate you getting that pass off a lot. So you're going to want to use these things strategically, and they're meant to change the way that you play both offense and defense. Yeah, and that and that's great. I mean, I think there's a lot of feedback that we heard from folks. At the end of the day, you know, it's not something that you're always going to get. You got to be very tactical and how you're using these uh, zone abilities yes um, and you know it's it's something that you really have to scheme and plan against so uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look as well at uh, Patrick Mahomes' superstar abilities we see he also has um, you know one second here dashing dead eye. Ah, I'm, that, I'm, I go. gotcha man okay so yeah one of his superstar abilities uh, which is going to be available to him in every game that he plays in is dashing dead eye and that is perfect pass accuracy when on the run um, the counter to this is obviously putting pressure on him. So you're going to see a theme once you start to read more about our abilities. A lot of the passing abilities are known as some form of dead eye. And the counter to those dead eye abilities is putting pressure on the quarterback. So that adds value to the abilities that allow defenders to put extra pressure on the quarterback. I also already mentioned QB contain. And then there's some edge rush abilities that I think are going to be pretty popular in keeping players in the pocket. Uh, but perfect passing accuracy on the run is just like what it says. We have different levels of accuracy in our game uh, in terms of throwing a pass. And so when you're throwing on the run with Patrick Mahomes, which is something that he really excels at for sure in real life, he's going to have an extra level of accuracy that nobody else has in that situation. In the spirit of, you know, uh, dashing dead eye, uh, I also know he has like a red zone dead eye and a no look dead eye. Can we talk about both of those superstar abilities? Yep, we'll go through these real quick. So red zone dead eye, very similar to the other one. It's perfect pass accuracy when you're inside the red zone. Same counters as uh, dashing dead eye. Um, when you're inside the 20-yard line going in, uh, you don't have to worry about throwing inaccurate passes as long as you are not throwing from an under-pressure state. And you can do that both while on the run or inside the pocket. And then no look that eye. This one uh, truly right now is exclusive to Patrick Mahomes. Um, he's going to be the only player in the game that can throw perfect passing accuracy on crossbody throws. Now, I know our community is going to hear that, and they're going to raise a little bit of an eyebrow, <laughs> uh, especially coming off of a, a very high-level Mike Vick yeah, here for sure. uh, inside of Ultimate Team. Uh, so we also reworked how our passing accuracy works in game, and it's extremely difficult to complete a pass when throwing those on the run cross body throws. Yeah. You're going to get a lot more inaccurates in that case, and, and other things that we're going to talk about at a later time. 
but this ability is going to allow him to do that. Awesome. Also exclusive to Patrick Mahomes, when you're making crossbody throws, you are going to be able to trigger his signature no look animation on that throw. And that is going to be only for Patrick Mahomes. So the ability will be able to be used by other players inside a franchise and ultimate team. But Patrick Mahomes specifically will have the ability to, to do a no look. That's awesome. And I know that uh, when Greg, uh, Greg will come on shortly, he'll talk a little bit about kind of making our players, you know, appear authentic uh, in game. And we'll talk a little bit about that. I also know Patrick Mahomes has that escape artist that we talked about a little bit earlier, uh, which you went ahead and talked through some of those superstar abilities right there. Um, but yeah, man, uh, anything else you want to add regarding uh, zone abilities, superstar abilities, any parting words for the audience? Uh, the thing that I think is most important for us to note about superstar X factors is they're meant to bring authenticity to the game. They're meant to separate the elite players from everybody else and give you that emotional connection to your favorite players. They're meant to replicate these guys who take over the games on Sundays, the guys that we watch football to watch sure. play. Uh, it's bringing a level of authenticity that transcends what we've been used to in terms of what ratings brings to the game. For sure. uh, they're a really nice complement to ratings to get the outcomes that you're really expecting from superstar players. And also, I, I hate to bring the word up, but it also decreases RNG when you have these elite players. You're getting outcomes that we're saying, hey, you do this situation, you know exactly what you're gonna get because you have this good player. That's awesome, man. Well, thank you so much, Clint, for coming through, giving the context, yeah, man. Um, just being utterly transparent and kind of give us a little hint into what's coming in gameplay on 523 uh, Part 2. Clint will be back uh, to kind of give more context on what, was, what we're doing in gameplay, uh, what's going on with playbooks, all that kind of great stuff. So again, Clint, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Hey everybody, we're back with, uh, we have another senior designer here, Greg Heddleston. Um, great guy, uh, truly authentic. I mean, you know, on, on the theme <laughs> authenticity and everything like that, but uh, Greg's gonna be here and he's gonna talk a little bit about what we're doing to make our players feel authentic in game. And so explain a little bit what you do here at EA and also, you know, kind of some of the things you've been working in this authenticity space uh, regarding uh, Superstar X Factors. Yeah, so to, uh you know, transition off of Mahomes and how we're making authentic, uh, him authentic through the abilities that we have. Uh, we're also doing animations and, and how they throw and how they move um, and uh, paying off the authenticity outside of purely just uh, the ability feature itself. Um, so we have uh, some footage that we we've put together now, to great. kind of pay I get, off I get everything. I'm excited about it. Yeah. This is stuff that you know the community always wants to see. Like, so what do we got going on right here? So right here, we're basically these are our motion capture athletes that we bring in uh, to our studio up in Canada in Vancouver at the Capture Lab, and we have multiple athletes come in to do these throwing animations because we want to have as many takes as we can possibly get. Um, this allows us to line people up. We can have them throw in different angles because uh, you, you, know, you have your, your 90 and your 45 degree angle passing directions. So this enables us to get as many takes as we can possibly get to roll through, look through and see like, oh yeah, the actor two like totally nailed it. We're gonna order that one and let the other ones go away. Okay. So we're always finding ways to get as much variety and as much uh, authenticity and accuracy to the motions that we're trying to capture with our athletes. Got it. And I noticed that right here, it looks like we got, we got a couple of these, right, uh, that are, were being shown. It looks like they're on the matrix or something like yeah. that. Uh, can you explain to the audience what's going on yeah. right there? So this is, Ant, this is our animation technology program we use in the studio here, and this is how we put together our animations for our gameplay. Uh, it also drives a lot of the, the logic behind what moves get picked based on the situation or what button you press on the controller. Uh, so right here with Mahomes, you know, you saw earlier with the motion capture, capture guys, uh, we bring it into the game and we clean it up and get all the noise that comes out from motion capture uh, with our animators here. And so for Mahomes' case, you see the kind of the kick out with his leg, that little yeah, baseball, sure. mm -hmm. you know, pitcher style, a little or orthodox from what your, your prototypical quarterback is. 
Uh, but that kind of fits his kind of backyard personality of, of play where he's just wide open, always looking to make plays, make exciting plays. Um, so the more uh, authenticity we can bring to how he plays on the field and how he walks on the field and uh, throws the ball and is throwing on the run, his no-look dead eye uh, that Clint touched on earlier where he's doing the no-look passes. Like These are all things that help make Mahomes feel authentic and really pay off him being our cover athlete. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to kind of see how these kind of play out in game. Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, to me, Rodgers is another guy that I really enjoy kind of seeing just his mannerisms in game. Um, I know we have uh, some footage right here of Aaron Rodgers um, go ahead and walk us through this real quick. Yeah, it's the same thing. We line all our different guys up, and we, we kind of teach, we show them videos of Aaron. And we're, you know, obviously you see the kind of the, the kick hip twist on there and a little bit of the, the wrist breakage after they throw the ball. That's all part of, you know, following his mannerisms, his little hop steps as he runs and, you know, throws on the run. These are all kind of consistent mannerisms that we've seen looking at NFL film. And so we try to bring these into the studio and we have our athletes look at them and then we just take as many takes as we can get to try to nail it as, as much as we possibly can. So the mocap, how long does that typically take I and mean, where is it done? So we do uh, usually multiple days of a shoot or uh, like about a week. We'll go up to Vancouver, our EA studio up there where we make FIFA and all the other uh, NHL and that. And there's a capture lab up there that's got a giant volume that we have that we can run 40 yard dashes mm -hmm. we can set up field goal block plays we can basically we can have guys throwing footballs you know 40 yards down the field into nets um, it's it's a really great volume that we've uh, continued to iterate on with that uh, group and it's really enabled us to build you know better content that we capture for our motion capture and our uh, locomotion and passing animations um, great well, that's crazy. I, I know one of the things that I was always curious about is because, you know, you, you have to do the mocap first and then you got to do the ant. So it takes some time to get it in the game. How long does it take to do the um, ant? Uh, once we get the animations back and hooked up, uh, it's usually within a day or so we can get through and work with an engineer and make sure that there's a game state that fits where these animations need to play. Uh, like in this instance, the stuff that we've shown here, these are the passes. So um, in our logic, when we, you know, when you hit whatever pass icon you want to throw to, we'll go to the bank of the, the animations that we've cleaned up for that player and we tag them to a specific player so that nobody else gets them. Cool. Um, and then we basically triangulate where you're gonna throw and we pick the animation that's gonna fit that throwing angle. Yeah, so I, another person that's very iconic in our game is Drew Brees. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look real quick here at Drew. Um, what do we got going on here? So Drew's got the uh, kind of the classic, you know, compact throwing. He's doing the adjusting his gear, you know, licking his fingers, all the Dan Marino age and all that stuff too. Kind of the <laughs> old guys like licking the football, which just seems disgusting to me. But, uh, the, but yeah, it's it's a way for us to continue to pay off these, you know, X Factor athletes in our game, uh, and also you know provide more authenticity for people that are fans of that team specifically. So if you're a big Saints fan and you're seeing Rodgers and Drew and Mahomes throwing like you see them throw on TV, there's an attachment level that you get and a satisfaction level that we're trying to bring with this. That's awesome. So I know from, a, you know, from an authenticity perspective, you know, we've done things in the celebration space. Is, is there anything different that's going to be happening kind of this year with uh, celebrations? Yeah, so each of the different athletes, uh, we are trying to find all reference of their first down animations, their celebration dances that they do. So when you go in and... Uh, you know, pick your celebration type. If you pick signature, you'll play something that is authentic to that person's uh, that we've seen in the past. Okay, good stuff. Uh, any anything else you kind of want to share with the audience before we bring back man of the people, Z Farrell's giveaway? Uh, hey, <laughs> uh, anything else uh, you want to talk about? Yeah, so to get back into the the unique passes and the unique animations that we've done with that, we've standardized all of our passing animations inside of Madden right now. Um, so what we've done is Rodgers is the fastest release quarterback in the game right now. Um, feeling something kind of you're used to when you throw a gunslinger on a person in mutt right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so he's our fastest. He's our like baseline for speed. And then it uh, rolls out from there. So you have people like Baker Mayfield, uh, people like uh, you know, Drew Brees. Uh, we also got authentic animations for Big Ben, Brady. Uh, we have some stuff for Philip Rivers because he's got that kind of sidearm yeah. uh, throw. So we'll have about you know half dozen or so quarterbacks that we've gotten authentic throwing animations for in the game. And the speeds of the quarterbacks throwing um, is based on what we're finding in our statistics and looking at film. And then and basically it's to help 
make these guys stand out more as these elite quarterbacks compared to somebody that may be second or third string on your team. You don't want them ripping off laser beams. For sure. Um, so it adds that level of value to those guys being on your team in modes like franchise and then mutt. Uh, and also helps us to uh, better, better broaden the way that the passing game feels inside of the game this year. That's awesome. Well, cool, man. Well, Greg, thank you so much for coming on. I'm sure we're going to have Greg back uh, again to go ahead and do some of these uh, broadcasts and be on MDD. Thank you again for coming in. We're going to bring man of the people back out here and go ahead and walk through some things. So, uh, yeah, uh, stay tuned. Great stuff, man. The people is back. Uh, that was pretty awesome. So I'm, I'm, it's great to have kind of Clint and Greg on the broadcast, kind of talking a little bit of what's going on with Superstar X Factor abilities, zone abilities, and also Superstar abilities. Uh, really excited to go for the follow up happening on 523, uh, which is gonna be great gameplay part two. Uh, you had one job, one job. Is this cup there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah, keeping it culturally uh, relevant. I, I'm I'm not culturally relevant, but these guys are kind of keeping us on our toes. Thank you. I mean, you know, uh, Gibbs has one job, and uh, yeah, uh, he kind. I think that's payback. I think that's payback for all the times that we're teasing him on stream. That you know, he has one job. We actually had to hire an uh, like an audio expert. <laughs> This guy, I'm just going to let him keep going. Uh, so, uh, so, no, it's good, so it's good. Next? So, so what's next? So Look, what's I mean, next? that's that's what this show is all about. It's about fun, having fun out there. We just got great information, and we had the development team. You know, they're a huge part of this, because we can't do these without their info. Sure. And uh, it's awesome to hear their level of insight and detail. Uh, a couple things they pointed out that really resonated with me and, and things I want to read more about. So, one number one thing, the blog is live right now. Uh, part one of gameplay. So that is a two-part blog, so you're going to get a lot more details on RPOs, playbooks in part two, and also some of the things they alluded to. Uh, you'll read more about that on 523. There'll be another blog. But part one about Superstar X Factor and a few other extra bonus things at the bottom uh, is out right now. So you can go check that out. If, you, if you're tuning in late to this or you missed anything, make sure you look at that. Um, being rooted in authenticity is a thing that comes up a lot. I think um, I saw a lot of feedback of like, it seems going to feel too arcade or they're going to be on fire. I think they did a great job of, you know, letting yeah. you know like what you have to do to get in there, what those counters are. And from the feedback I've heard, that is the number one takeaway is like, wow, it is really rooted in authenticity. So I'm excited for that. The biggest change for me is something Greg kind of hinted at is like, because these players have either these abilities or these different throw speeds, each individual team, when you play a head-to-head -head Madden game, you're selecting, like if you take the Ravens, you're taking Lamar Jackson, and if you don't have a scheme that capitalizes on what he does, you're not going to have success. Yeah. If you have, uh, it's just a pocket passer and a scrambler, like the teams feel completely different because of these new abilities. Mm -hmm. You got to go pick who the ones who have the ones you need to get the job done. So, you know, the Texans are out there. They're a very popular team. It's uh, something we're going to explore a lot more, and you'll get to you know, see sure. EDA play, but the, the way the teams now feel different because of these abilities is the biggest takeaway, at least for me, yeah. um, a Madden yeah. amateur. Yeah, and, and Hugh brought that up last week. You know, we were talking about like, players feeling authentic. You know, one of the things, we were having a side conversation, he said, you know, teams are going to feel like they're teams. You've got to really scheme and kind of play you know, like when you pick up the Texans, it's going to feel like you're playing with the Texans, where if you play with like the Chiefs, it's going to feel like you're playing with the Chiefs. So I thought that was really great information and insight. Um, you've been playing the game. I, every time I'm around, I see you and Gibbs kind of labbing uh, here, providing feedback to the developers, which is awesome. Um, so, you know, I, I know... Uh, Survey. 
That's, that's, that's very what I important. Say. Like, survey yeah. is really important right now. Uh, it should be inside the chat. Let us know how we're doing on these streams, things that we can improve upon. But not just that, but if you guys have questions, make sure to go ahead and leave them there. What we're going to do tomorrow uh, on Madden Daily Drops, it's going to start at 10 a.m. tomorrow because for a lot of the people that are in the stream are, you know, Mutt fans, we got Series 7 coming out tomorrow. We're going to tease that, but we're also going to be answering some of the questions from tonight's stream. And then what's great, and, and I really do appreciate it, is that um, the team has done a phenomenal job on making sure that some of these questions that we're seeing, we're, we're sitting down with Greg, we're sitting down with Clint, to kind of walk through and say, hey, these are some questions the community have. Can we get those updated uh, as part of the community questions in the gridiron notes? So, um, you know, you'll see them out tonight, but then tune in tomorrow, roughly around four or five o'clock. We'll tweet it out from the main accounts to let you guys know they've been updated with some of the community questions. Uh, we had some great ones last week. I think we had like, uh, we answered like five on stream, and then we had like another eight or nine that we answered in the gridiron notes. And here's some great feedback from the community that they appreciate not only the information, uh, level of transparency, kind of coming back and kind of circling back. I know one stuff. point of feedback they have, and if, and if we could just, uh, you don't hear it. So that was, <laughs> I know that was the number one thing. We worked really hard on that. Uh, Dude, so we're excited about that. It. But the survey, uh, definitely fill that out. Gabby's putting it in the chat right now. We are. We will tweet it out from maybe EA Cralo. If you, if you reply, if you're able to take that survey, reply underneath to the EA Cralo tweet that says you took the survey, uh, we can go ahead and maybe select a winner for a Kahuna there. Uh, I'm also going to give you three other people chances to win Kahunas here on Madden Daily Drops, and you can do that by tweeting at Clint Oldenburg a positive message, something you learned from the stream tonight, or something that you know you appreciate him coming out to to spend his time. Yeah, and even questions. Um, I mean, even questions there. Or gonna, or ask a question to yeah, Clint and, on Twitter. Yeah, and if we if we find something there that we need to go ahead and kind of get it into the blog or something, do that for sure. Yeah. So for an opportunity to win some car um, some items in Madden Ultimate Team, go ahead. We'll pick three winners. Uh, either respond to Kralo's uh, tweet to the survey, and or tweet at Clint Oldenburg. Let them know you appreciate them. Let them know uh, what you learned on the stream. Let them know a question you might have. And uh, he won't have to reply because we'll go to him tomorrow and we'll say, hey, Clint, we, we looked, we saw the questions people were asking. Uh, he may, but we'll, we'll put them in the gridiron notes that will come out tomorrow. So big key takeaways. More streams coming up. Uh, S. Gibbs, go ahead, drop the, uh, the visual here so they can see future streams. Ultimate Teams next week. I know gameplay is a big part of Ultimate Teams, so... You had a little bit of gameplay this week. You got more gameplay part two the week after the Ultimate Team stream. And then um, you have the blog that's out right now. You'll have the blog that's out for Ultimate Team. You'll have the blog that's out for the gameplay deep dive uh, for, for, for part two. So you have a lot more news about Madden uh, coming out. I know I've already seen a lot of, of great community members reacting to this stream. I've seen them sharing some of the stuff we showed. Uh, I thought the, the animation's really cool. There's a third step to that animation, which is seeing them actually, you know, in finally in-game. Sure. Um, and that's something that EA play. Like, right now, we're telling you about what is coming to the game, and we're, you know, we're talking about it. Yeah. But we it's will great. be showing you in the future, and EA play is going to be a moment where we'll be showing you more gameplay. Take that survey and let us know who you want to see at EA play. Oh, so because uh, the survey is interactive, so you'll actually be able to, one of the questions will say, what do you want to see more of at EA play? It's the first question. It's a, a choice between... Uh, some options, some of our uh, Madden ambassadors, some of our other uh, superstar players will show you their abilities. You pick, you let us know, we'll then go and take that feedback and that advice. We had some great votes in the franchise one. They want to see a, a big, I think a draft moment perhaps is what one out there. Cool. We'll, we'll have to find that out. But uh, survey is a huge thing for us, and we appreciate all your feedback. So. Yeah, well, great. Well, guys, again, make sure to tune in uh, next week. Same time, same place tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern, though. Uh, Series 7, Madden uh, Ultimate Team. We're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about Series 7. We're going to answer some of the questions from tonight's stream, and then we'll make sure to update that blog. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, this is uh, Kralo, and this is uh, Man of the People, Z Farls. We'll talk to you next week. S. Gibbs, one job, end the stream. <laughs>